Some time ago, we reviewed this, the Airx Delta M, and were quite impressed. This is a great gun and an incredible value, and optics ready. Ran this gun exactly as you see it here through Sentinel Concepts course, and we're impressed enough, decided to take a look at another one. This is the Airx Delta X Tactical Tabletop Review and Field Strip, coming up next on GB Gun. Airx or RX, however you want to pronounce it, uh, makes quite a few impressive guns and seem to be quite a freaking value. Um, interesting basic info card here. Hard to ignore a quick start guide that greets you as soon as you open the case. And as we open it up, you can see we have the pistol. Yes, the tactical model has suppressor height sights and a threaded barrel. We've got one flush fitting 17 round magazine. And this is probably a plus two. Doesn't say on there, I'm assuming. Taking us to 19 rounds. Inside of this container is something that I think is really clever that Rx has done. You see that end is threaded. Well, this is your entire cleaning kit, and this isn't one of those BS cleaning kits. These are actual brass rods, brushes, jags, etc., everything that you need and the rods thread into the end of this, and this becomes the handle for all of your cleaning needs. Up top, we've got three different back straps, taking us to a total of four. I would love to show you how they change the way it fits the hand and reach. Those are very important things that you should try when you have a gun that has released. Try all of them, even if you don't think it's gonna fit. Ms. T and I have been quite surprised with what we liked and uh, what we didn't, but YouTube doesn't let us show that anymore because they consider it gunsmithing. But you can see here on the M that I ran in the course, I ran the large backstrap on it, and by the end of the course, I think I probably should have gone for a different size. Underneath there, we have an extended magazine release and spring, plastic plates and hardware for optics mounting. There's a total of five plates in there the hardware and wrenches necessary to use those plates, and our federally mandated lock, as well as the manual. If you've seen any of our videos before, you know that I read the manuals because, well, it gives us an idea of how well the company wants you to understand the product. And in section one here, this introduction, which is quite lengthy, is a rather in-depth story about the Delta model pistols, why they were developed, uh, it gives you some nice background. We have a mixture of illustrations and photographs breaking everything down. If you want to know specs, you can either check out the article over on gbgunsdepot.com or you can pause here and strain your eyes to see that. The rest of the manual is fairly clear. I look through for ammunition since people always ask if something can run plus P or not. It says that this gun is built for CIP standard ammunition and SAMI ammunition does not mention plus P or not. Plus P is a SAMI rating. Does that work or not? I don't know. And quite frankly, if I were you and you're considering, do I need plus P for this firearm? With a barrel longer than four inches, you generally don't need it. It's kind of a waste. So I'm not worried about running plus P through this. We might in our range video, but there's no need to run plus P ammunition. Let me get all this stuff. Oh, one more bit. That I think is pretty cool included in this is an additional spring and guide rod and this is a 20 pound spring uh, versus the 17 pounder that's applied in there. This is necessary if you're running a suppressor or some compensators, even really wild types of ammunition, tuning your uh, recoil spring can help with reliability. So it's a nice touch that that is included in with the pistol. Let me get this stuff out of the way and we can take a look at the gun. One of the things that really impressed us with the Delta M is how slim the gun is. It is uh, not only narrow in actual dimensions, but narrow in how it fits the hand. Everything is very nicely contoured. It makes it almost on the small side for my double XL hands, but for Miss T, it made it very comfortable. And for anybody under double XL size hands, it's probably a good fit. Start off by showing clear, of course. And we do have a loaded chamber indicator here that will pop up when there's a round in the chamber. Start and after that we go to our magazine ejection or release. Decent ejection. That's with the gun upside down. Lock the slide open since some people say that's cheating. And we still get kick. 
Now this is an ambidextrous control pistol. Both the slide lock release and magazine release are on both sides of the gun. However, I noticed on this one, you really gotta get in there to push that magazine release. I probably did that so that folks with large hands don't end up bumping it from this side when shooting right-handed. That may be what that other magazine release included in there is all about. Uh, the magazines, witness winner on the back, as I like it, a nice bright orange follower. And I can tell you as someone who's run through numerous courses, it's nice to have that, hey idiot, you're empty, screaming at you. Um, <laughs> as soon as you, you know, you feel something different with the gun. Once you know a gun, you can feel when it's empty. But just beginning to tilt, being able to see that nice bright orange is a nice indicator. If you're curious about the sizes of what makes this an X versus the L and the M, this is an M length slide. Here's an M. But it's a longer stock. It's a 17 round gun versus a 15 round gun. The L also has a longer slide. This X is the shorter slide on the longer frame. It's the mullet gun, if you will. Now that we got that out of the way, if we can uh, continue with our standard tabletop look at the gun. We start up front and the barrel extends a decent ways in front. Nice to have the threads end not right up against the muzzle in case you have something that threads a little deep that allows for a little extra clearance. Third protector does not have one of those little grommets, so you want to make sure this doesn't come loose if you're going to be like we are and shooting it without something on the end of it. Slide to frame fit, got quite a bit of play up front. Some decent beveling that helps with holstering and I can attest to that or confirm that based on uh, my use with the M in a training course. But these extra tall sights of course to clear a suppressor or possibly co-witness with a red dot that you put on top. As you can see the serrations here are directional and they really grab. They are nice and functional. We have three rail slots underneath coming to the front of our trigger guard. It's textured for those who want to grip there. Also textured underneath to provide a little extra right there. The underneath of the trigger guard is not radius in any visibly high way, but it fits very comfortably. And I did not encounter any Glock knuckle type experiences in my training with the M. The texture on this thing is pretty nice. It's um, not visibly super aggressive. And even just rubbing your hand over it, not super aggressive. Like this is something you'd carry and it wouldn't exfoliate you, but it certainly does hold on. And you can see how my gray one has filled in with dirt from training that uh, there is certainly some space there. You notice at the bottom of the frame, we have a little bit of a toe that helps scoop in. And as with most 17 round guns, I can get my whole hand on here nice and comfortably. That's great because then I can slam a mag in without worrying about pinching my finger there. This has happened to me on many smaller guns. I also like that the back strap is extending a little bit beyond. That gives you an index point as you're bringing the mag up to hit and go against. You can see that this is the shape of the back strap that came on it. Not sure which one it is. I'm assuming some type of medium. Coming around the back, you can see we have a striker indicator. That's because this is a partially cocked gun, which will lead us into our trigger talk. You have some resistance, but a pretty clear tick up to the wall. And as you can see, the striker is only moving a little bit there. Clean break, striker gone. Our reset, it's very authoritative. It actually pushed me past the reset point, but that might have just been me. But brings you right back to the wall for another break. There we go, that's a better look at it. It does have some appreciable weight to it. I would say appropriate for carry or duty uh, use, not too light uh, and not too short. And I say that having run this gun at a shooting on the move course, something that you don't do <laughs> really many places. Shooting while moving was the intent of that course. Not something that, uh, well, you want to take lightly or take a light trigger to because any bump in your step or misstep or things like that while you're prepping the trigger could be a hazard. So I ran the uh, Delta and had no issues. See our serrations on the back, follow the same as the front. And our sight picture, we have a white dot front, black dot rear. 
and all of our controls duplicated on this side as expected, which is excellent. Next, we'll field strip the gun and take a look inside the arrow. Field stripping the Delta is gonna seem a little different, a little funky. <laughs> We're gonna uh, check for clear, of course. And then we've got takedown levers on both sides, like you've come to expect. Pull those down, ease the gun, the slide back a little bit, forward a little bit, and it pops right off the top. That's all there is to it, really simple. Take a look inside of our frame. We can see the regular familiar setup here and real size. To get our barrel out, we're going to need to remove the throw protector, then remove the spring. Now, by tapping down on the barrel hood, bring it forward a little bit so that it unlocks and out. And now we can take a look inside of our slide which is beautifully machined, very clean. Notice the internal extractor there. This gun keeps everything sealed out fairly well. Our barrel's got a nice polished feed ramp. It's fairly clean inside. We'll check chamber fitment, as always using our Nozzler Match. Though we should probably find some other stuff since this isn't loaded anymore. If you guys have suggestions as to what your favorite match ammo is for pistols, let us know and we'll give it a try. Which chamber fitment what we're listen looking and listening for is how much of this brass is supported by the chamber. You're gonna drop it and listen for a nice plunk, like that. Check for free rotation, which it does. And then we're looking around the brass to see what's exposed beyond those bends. Usually underneath is where like glocks and other things fail to support it. This looks nicely supported and we have a nice good fit. A little loose if anything, but that could just be that it's very clean. The reason why that's important is if you should happen to have a case failure, in the case of something that's been reloaded too many times, reloaded too hot, um, bad brass, bad, bad aluminum, depending on what you're using for ammunition, when it the brass wants to rupture, where it's not supported is where it's going to explode. <laughs> and so, with a gun like this in your hand, where do you think those forces go if they're not going down the barrel? So the more supported your case is, the more it's going out the end, which is how I prefer it, rather than into my hand. Um, I've known of a few cases of a rupture happening in an unsupported gun, like a third gen Glock or something like that, and it has ruined their day and ruined the gun, but otherwise, no real harm done. As I reassemble this, you guys will uh, see it's basically the inverse of the disassembly. I'll talk about what we'll do in our range video. When we get this out to the range, we're going to uh, have two shooters. We'll give you our cold shots, absolute first impressions. They are the true first shots through the gun that Ms. Tia and I will take. Then we'll do full magazine plus one, see how these mags run. I think I'll use the extended mag on that test. Then our trademark what's for dinner test, see what the gun eats, running 10 different loads through it, so you get an idea of what will function and won't, what won't, or how well it functions. Our sights and trigger control test using our six inch spinner target. Then some practical accuracy before we give you concluding thoughts from both shooters. And that concludes the ARX Delta X Tactical Tabletop Review and Field Strip. Thanks for watching.